Boston, Massachusetts. It's the Cube covering WTG Transform 2019. Brought to you by Winslow Technology Group. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman, and we're in the shadow of Fenway Park. It's the third year we've had the Cube at the Winslow Technology Group's user event, which is now called WTG Transform, and it's 2019. Joining me is the president and founder of Winslow Technology Group, Scott Winslow. Thanks so much for joining me, and for the second year, Scott, I say do thank you for making the name of the show simpler for me to say, WTG Transform rolls off the tongue. Our, our marketing folks, we're happy to accommodate you, Stu, but we're, we're delighted to have theCUBE back. You guys do such a great job. Um, watching the industry, observing the industry, asking the great questions, so delighted to have you here. Well, and, and thank you. We always love talking to the users, and you've got 189 users here. The company uh, mm -hmm. itself is now 50 employees, 35% growth last year, so uh, congratulations, and uh, give us a little bit about what, what's happening at a macro level that, that are driving some of that the growth in your business. Yeah, thank you. It's been, uh, it's been a fun ride. I, I mean, we're in the right industry, first of all, right? The server storage, uh, hyper-converged infrastructure, networking, hybrid cloud solutions, it all continues to grow. Data growth is explosive, so I think we happen to be in the right industry. That's certainly driving the growth. Uh, our partnership with some of the key partners here, partners like Dell, VMware, Nutanix, Arctic Wolf, Aerohive, uh, you know, I think we've uh, saddled up with the right horses there. And uh, we've really got a, a really great team uh, on the sales side, but pre-sales engineering, post-sales engineering. So when you combine all of those factors together, it's led to some nice growth. I put some numbers up. Privately held companies don't usually share those numbers. Uh, we do like to share them with our, our customers. And you know, we're a $37 million company last year. We're going to be 47 plus this year. And we feel like we're on our way to be a $100 million uh, reseller by 2022. So it's, it's really exciting. Well, that's, <coughs> once again, congratulations on that. And what it's really interesting to watch is, you know, you started out selling Compellent. And Compellent got bought by Dell. Uh, a few years back, Dell bought EMC. Those mm. are some of the big inflection points Right. in your business and you've had some great insight on you know especially the things I've talked to you the last few years when we first met you at Dell World and through this transition of you know Dell going from just being Dell to being you know a bigger player in the enterprise market they've now got as you said you know VMware all the hyperconverge all of these you know tailwinds for their growth uh, have been part of what's been accelerating your growth so mm. give us the state of the state when it comes to Dell how are they doing with the channel how are they doing with the the, the products the solution uh, the innovation that uh, Joe Batista talked about this morning from Dell. How is that trickling down to you as a partner and ultimately your customers? Yeah, I mean, we first got involved with Dell back in 2011, as you referenced, when they acquired Compellent. Uh, we were concerned about it at the time. We wondered how we could fit into the ecosystem of this, at the time, $60 billion company. Uh, little did we know it would be the best thing that ever happened to us, because we were really kind of a boutique shop uh, selling storage, and you know now we've got the full uh, line, and, and they've got the widest portfolio in the industry. So, you know, servers, storage, networking, um, you know, hyperconverged solutions, obviously VMware, uh, and so it's it's been a great uh, relationship for us. Um, you know, I think their relationship with the channel is uh, good. I wouldn't call it uh, simple. It is at times complex. Uh, they do about 40% of their business through the channel. You've got direct sellers out there that are very good that sometimes want to take the business direct. But there's a, you looked at the growth numbers that we have, and we've accomplished that as a Dell-centric partner. So at the end of the day, and I think this is Michael's argument kind of to the partner community, is that we've been able to grow our business. Um, some companies will have a ceiling and say, okay, all this business below a certain amount is partner business. You know, Dell doesn't have that. You have to kind of navigate your way through the system. But if you develop the kind of uh, relationship that we have with them, where there's some trust, they see our capabilities to, you know, when you're driving 200 end users to uh, an event like this, you know, even large OEMs like Dell take notice because it's the ability to drive new logos for their business. So we think the relationship's been really good. I'd give them, you know, an A minus, I'd say, in terms of their, uh, their portfolio. I'd give them an A in terms of the uh, channel relationships. You know, we have squabbles uh, now and then, but in general, I think the relationship is very good. Well, the thing we know in the industry is uh, that there is no thing, thing is perfect, right. and there needs to be change and growth a long time, and it uh, sounds like they're listening and, and working with you, know, you, your peers in the industry, to work that. I know there was a little bit of concern. You know, when EMC came in the move, you know, you're into the picture, you're in EMC's backyard here, and right. there were some really big uh, EMC channel partners, uh, and what would that mean to the companies that had been with Dell? And it se seems like you're navigating that yeah, quite well. Yeah, we've been able to find our niche uh, in that ecosystem. Um, 
you know, it's, uh, I'm not saying it's always been easy, but you know, we're really starting to sell the power maxes and unities and IDPAs and Isilon and getting away from just being that kind of uh, compelling centric partner. I think a couple of the benefits that came out of the merger, one is if you look at Dell's server business, and I referenced this in my opening comments, over the last eight quarters, they've taken six or seven points a share in the server market from their competitors, HP and Cisco. And that's really re the result of the merger and having that additional sales bandwidth. Uh, so that's been fantastic for our business and for theirs. Uh, and I think if you look like at Dell end user compute, that was never a big part of our business. We kind of got into that over the last four or five years, really at the behest of the Dell sales team. And that's been a big win for us, surprisingly enough, with the, uh, particularly with the Windows 7 to 10 migration, our end user compute business is through the roof. I, I gave our sales team too low in numbers on that. They're all about 160% of quota. <laughs> so uh, we're going to have to fix that next year. All but. right, well, t always tip to the sales rep. If you have a good plan, <laughs> max it out because they will adjust exactly. it later. Um, exactly, payback right. is a, you know what. Yeah, so <laughs> Scott, uh, one of the biggest changes I've seen in your business in the last year is, uh, you know, you've been deep with Dell for many years and it was the Dell XC, which is the Nutanix OEM, yeah. is something that you were on early. Uh, you're a strong partner there in Nutanix, still a strong partner, but today it is a mix of both the Dell XC yeah. and the, the VX Rail from Dell EMC. So talk a little bit about, uh, you know, why that change, how that's going, you know, how, how customers are seeing things these days. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. We were on very early uh, with Nutanix and we very much believe in their product and, and the uh, software uh, solution set that they've put together. I can remember Alan Atkinson from Dell standing up and saying, this is our HCI solution, it's going to be Nutanix on Dell Compute. And um, you know we've got you know, 55 plus really happy customers out there and we continue uh, to sell that um, solution and, we, and we've got a lot of you know, very good uh, customer satisfaction. Uh, that relationship's not going away. Uh, despite what some people may say in the industry, the fact is they've got 35,000 units out there. Uh, there's a billion dollar pipeline of XC series. Uh, and there's a, a, a gentleman that runs the server business at Dell that wants to make sure that doesn't go away because that's one of the reasons that Dell's doing so well in the server business. Now, having said that, you know, our, uh, our take on it has been, hey, let's have two of the best products in the industry in our quiver. Uh, that being XC Series Nutanix and VxRail. You know, initially when VxRail first came out, uh, we didn't think that it had some of the capabilities uh, that it needed, and as it's evolved, uh, we think that VxRail's gotten a lot better and it's a lot more competitive, certainly in a VMware environment, a uh, very strong player. Uh, and if you look at the numbers, um, they're doing very well with VxRail and so are we. So right now we've got uh, you know, the, 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 the one and uh, two horse in the industry. Uh, we think it's great for us to be able to go to our customers. Uh, we give our AEs and our SAs in the field uh, the ability to evaluate uh, the opportunity, what are the requirements of the customer, and do we think that either XC Series Nutanix or VxRail will be the better fit and uh, we feel like either way it's a win for us and, and a win for the customer. Yeah, so Scott, feedback we heard at Dell World is that you know the Dell team's really trying to put their thumb on the scale to really yeah. incent the field to sell VxRail. Yep. XC is there, as you said, you know, Ashley and the server team, you know, they want to sell servers, but you know, all things being equal, they're not equal. They yeah. they want to sell the the full Dell stack. Uh, so is, is there any of that that impacts what you're doing or, you know, Pretty much from your standpoint, it's customer choice. We understand there's never one best solution out there, and it is often you know differentiation in there. You know, obviously one is only VMware, one has multi hypervisor, including a you know built-in hypervisor. Mm -hmm. there. there, there's definitely you know it, 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 it's tough to line these up and, and compare them. There are differences there, but you know what, what's the impact of kind of Dell's positioning and you know what what customers? How do they determine what to use? Well, at the end of the day, the rubber meets the road at the customer. I mean, we've got to, we always say within our company, we have to be aligned first with the customer. What do they want? What's the best fit for the customer? Now, internally, inside the inside baseball within Avar, what we say is we've got to grow both businesses. We've got to grow our Nutanix business, which we did significantly last year, and we have to grow our VxRail business, which we did. And that way, you know, we keep um, both uh, groups happy, uh, and we're able to, you know, offer a, a nice portfolio. So, um, I think that's the 
best way to approach it. All right, Scott, want to give you the final word. This is the 16th year of, of your event here? It's the uh, 16th year of the company, 15th okay. year of the event. Yeah. All right, so give us the final takeaway. Yeah. I know you've got a lot of meetings, got a lot of activity. Yeah. Uh, give everybody the final takeaway from Transform. Well, it's been a great event uh, thus far. We've got you know more breakout sessions to go. We got the ball game tonight. Chris Sale is on the mound, so that's always exciting. We've got a lot of winning ball teams here in Boston. But uh, you know, for us, it's just growth. And more customers are here, more partners. We've got more going on in the hands-on lab. Our, Expo um, hallway, there's more product there, more subject matter experts. You know, we're, we're, we have a lot more going on in terms of security this year with Arctic Wolf being here. Our, uh, our VP of PS, Matt Kozlowski, is going to walk through a little cybersecurity uh, case study. And so I think we're doing more around security. Uh, and certainly uh, we've just got kind of more of, uh, of all the solutions that we offer and we're delighted to have an even bigger group here uh, this year. So onward and upward, I guess, is the, the final word. All right, onward and upward. Scott, thank you so much again for sharing the updates on, on your company as well as uh, what's happening with all your users. And we always love those, those, those user stories. So uh, we've got a full day of coverage here at WTG Transform 2019. I'm Stu Miniman and thank you for watching theCUBE.